Hey, how are you, man? Good, sir. How you doing? But uh, we got you on here for a reason. We got a roundtable here for Floyd Mayweather versus Miguel Cotto, and you're one of the guys, man, that breaks the fights down to the gritty. And we want to hear what you think, what your thoughts are. How does Miguel Cotto solve the puzzle of a Floyd Mayweather, and how does Floyd technically, soundly break down a Miguel Cotto? Um, you know, I don't see um, Cotto winning unless, um, for some reason. He land a power punch. I mean, he have a puncher's chance, um, but I think that's his only chance. He's, he's, he's slower. Um, he don't move as well. It's, he's there to hit. Um, so you know, and he swell up much easier now since he he fought against um, um, Margarito, and you know now he just seem like his face swell up so much easier. Right. Um, so I, I really don't see a good chance of him. Um, winning the fight because he's not the same guy. I think there's a lot um, already taken out of him um, out of that fight. Glenn, let me, let me ask you something because, you know, Pedro Diaz has been brought into the camp, and this is the second time he's involved with Miguel Cotto, but he brings in something a little bit different than most other trainers. He brings in a, a, a scientific view of how to build a fighter. Now, in your opinion, is that a little – just a little too late for an older fighter that's kind of stuck with his old ways, or is that an added, and could that make a difference when it comes May 5th, fight night? It could be a added piece because it all depends on the fighter. I mean, if he's in there uh, paying attention and, and, and know that he needs to get better on something, and the person is there teaching him what he needs to get better on, and if he's listening and he have the understanding that he want to get better, then you learn. Um you know, but for the most part, some guys don't believe they 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 have something to learn. They don't believe that they have something to get better. They're comfortable in what they're doing, especially if they're winning for a long time. He he lost some fights, so I think he should have um, a mindset where you know I lost before, so that there's always something that I can change and do better. Barry, let me ask you something because. Taking glimpse here and there of the 24-7, not even with that, even in the past when uh, Miguel Cotto was getting ready for his uh, rematch with Antonio Margarito, it, it seemed to me Diaz was brought in for that scientific... To me, I'm getting this take that there's more concern of making sure he's able to survive the distance. Does that tell you a little bit, as a trainer, that they're more or less worrying about m making it to the 12th round and not really working on a game plan to solve Floyd Mayweather? I mean, you can look at it a couple of different ways. Um, you know, it definitely that could be one of the ways to look at it. But knowing Miguel uh, and watching him over the years, man has a warrior's mentality. You know, he's that type of guy. If you look, go back to that first Margarito fight, the um, thing that got me was he took a lot of abuse, a lot of punishment. Right. But nevertheless, you know, he wasn't trying to quit. And, and it's very dangerous when he gets to that level because, you know, this is the type of fighter that you actually have to save from himself, you know, and uh, which is, you know, just a uh, blood and guts type of guy. Uh, on the flip side, you know, you look at, bringing, you know, fighters like Miguel, fighters like Floyd that are very, very seasoned, that have been doing this, this thing ever since they've been a baby, and coming down to the a latter part of their careers. Now, I mean, how much more can you teach it? Hmm. You know I mean, it's almost like you, yeah. are, you or myself taking a clay figurine that's already been made, put through the furnace, painted the whole night, and try to break it down and remake it. In a sense, he's not really a, a built-to-last kind of fighter, Cotto. He's kind of slow. He's got that kind of thudding power, so he's going to have to be more of a volume puncher. You know, he's going to slow down at some point, and then we found out that he's not that durable. He takes a beating only for about nine, ten rounds, and then he crumbles. So, I mean, really what this is is just kind of two good names against each other, I guess. I mean, do you give – I don't give Cotto any chance. I haven't since day one. Uh, well, I, I, I would say this. You know, because it is boxing, you know, anything could happen and has sure. happened in the past. Right. You know, you know, different fighters. So i got to give them at least that. Uh, but for the most part, if you look at pound-for-pound uh, pound, fighter versus fighter, skill for skill, and what's left in the tank, even though I give them that outside chance, 
smart money and the odds say Floyd should walk away either by a blowout or even the stoppage because of the style of Miguel Cotto and the style of Floyd Mayweather is picture perfect for the way uh, Floyd fights. First off, let me make, I, I don't think I need to make the introduction, but, you know, if we get some new listeners that are just barely kind of kind of falling into the line of becoming a boxing head, Ray, Mr. Ray Woods is the father of Diego Corrales, the late uh, Diego Corrales, who had a sensational, the fight of the decade, and I think the fight that's going to be going on for years and years and years in the history books, uh, who was with uh, uh, Jose Luis Castillo. Now, Ray, we got you on here because we got an upcoming fight happening May 5th on Saturday night against Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Miguel Cotto. We want to hear your take, your breakdown, who wins, and how does either one of these fighters fighters figure each other out? How do they solve the puzzle to get a stoppage or to make it go the distance? We haven't got a chance to see what uh what Cotto was doing in training. You know, they kind of like blocking that out. Right. But uh, I'm kind of picking Floyd. Floyd is not gonna get into fight. He's, everybody knows Floyd is not gonna get into a fight. He's gonna hit you and run, hit you and run, cover, cover, cover. Now, if Cotto, in my opinion, come to Floyd with his hands high, using the jab. And stand right on top of him. Stand right on top of him. Everywhere he moves, stay right on top of him and force Floyd to fight. He just may be able to catch him and maybe even knock him out. How uh, did he do down, that, though, Ray? You, you just, well, just, 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 uh, when Floyd started to move and started to just stay, just use your feet, hands high, and stay right on top of him. You know, uh, I tell you, uh, if uh, Cotto could watch Diego and uh, Alfredo Freitas, if yeah. Cotto could watch that, if he could watch that fight and kind of emulate that fight, he just may be able to uh, get a chance to catch forward with someone and knock him out. Just maybe. That's what we talked about. Do, uh, you and Diego had talked, and you told him Red Dog. That's the way you is that the one? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the one. I told Diego Diego uh Diego called me and asked me the way he uh, how should I fight Arsenal Raiders. I said, You remember how we fought uh uh a gainer? I said we red dog him. You remember the red dog? He said, Yeah. I say stay right on top of him, force him into a fight, and he open up and you catch it. You force him to fight and he'll open up and you catch it. And that's what happened. Well, you know, you know Floyd's money punch is that that straight right hand that he likes to throw. What does Miguel Cotto do to get around it? How does he shut that down, nummify it? First of all, you have to have the you, – you're a professional fighter. You should already know how to do this. But, you know, I understand uh, uh, you know, Floyd's uh, uh, specialist at getting it in. But basically, uh, leaving your hands where they're supposed to be, up, catching it, or slipping it, either one. Mm-hmm. Also, all, all, all he can be, all, if, he can, if he can get all the way in, smother it. You know, if 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 let's say you had Miguel Cotto, what it, what would it, be the strategy? Another, yeah, and that's another thing I, w- I, w- I, w- I was going to say. You know, really, I never had nobody to fight Mayweather before. You know, I mean, I've had, hopefully, you know, by the time you know, my son is old, older, and then he's up there. You know. He'll be retired by then, I think. Uh, uh, but you know what? Um, I think definitely the key, if, if I was training Cotto and I, if I was, you know, I never really seen the mistake that uh, Floyd does, but everybody has mistakes. Everybody has had had it, you know? And right. I, I'm, I was, before I called you, I, you know, I was looking at him with uh, Oscar Del Hoya. He is hittable, you know? But Oscar, at that time, he was faster, too, you know? And, and he was catching him with the jabs and the right hands, like I, I, I was hearing before. You were saying, you know, the, the best thing is for, for somebody to use the well, well, Cotto, use the right hand and come with the right. I mean, yeah, the yeah the left and come with the right. Um, you, you know what? It's it's kind of yeah. You're right about that. It's so easy, but you know, if you don't practice that, you know, right? How are you gonna execute that, execute that? You know. Uh, but if I had Cotto, you know, I think uh, I, I would definitely. A lot of people don't concentrate on the stomach. You know, he lives leaves his body open a lot to go to the the right to the stomach. And then maybe come with the right upstairs, you know. Uh, it's easy for me to say, but like I say, you know, if you don't practice it, how yeah. you can do it, you know, uh, the, the, you know, to the body. 
to go to the liver also, you know. Uh, man, you know, it, it's, it's hittable, you know. But how are you going to send somebody to hit the body if you haven't practiced that? You know, you have spent hours and thousands of times trying to hit that body, you know. Uh, and that's another good thing, you know. I think if, if Koto goes to the body, forget about the face because that guy's going to protect his face a lot, man. He moves his head. He covers his face real good with the shoulders and and moves too. So it, it, it's going to be hard, man. It, it's just going to be hard for Koto, I think. I don't know what, what they're going to what the strategy? What, what are they thinking about doing? But I would definitely say go to the throw the right to the chest. Yeah, the head moves. The body doesn't move that much, you know. Say you somebody gave you Miguel Cotto, uh, the one right after the Margarito uh, rematch. I mean, what would you design the game plan to be? I mean, all in kamikaze or or try to box, be smart, and get a points victory. How would you approach this? Uh, we will have to sit down and and, and put up a great. Uh, a great uh, technical plan because, I mean, as you can see, uh, Victor Ortiz wanted to take it to him. You know, Victor Ortiz rushed him in there and got, got reckless in there against Mayweather. And really, you can't do much. And I just think that the best way to be Floyd is uh, put up a plan of moving, you know. you got to move. you got to make him commit, uh, make him throw counter, and, 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 you know, using a lot of angles because, I mean, you can't just rush uh, uh, Mayweather. You can't. If you rush Mayweather, you're going to get in trouble. When Floyd had announced he was going to fight uh, Juan Mama Marquez, I, was, I had said my, my whole take about it was that you have two counterpunchers, and the way to beat a, a, beat a counterpuncher is that you have to take them out of their, their tune. And I think that – do you think that that's what anybody that's going to face Floyd – even a pressure fighter, he's got to mold himself a little bit different, meaning he's got to take Floyd out of that comfort zone, which is sit back and wait for you to lead in the dance. Correct. Correct. I mean, I mean, if, that's why you got to walk in a fight with, with not only one fight plan. you got to have, you got to have a couple of game plans. If one doesn't work, let's switch to the other one. You have to always have a backup plan because it's not always the way you think is going to go. I mean, you can't just come forward and look for, for for Floyd when Floyd is so comfortable just waiting for you to make a move. Now, I mean, eventually Floyd, he's not going to stand there and just look for you. He's going to come look for you sooner or later because he's a fighter. Right. And, and once you start making him come, once you start making Floyd commit to throw punches, you can work out of his work. How do you take away that straight right from Floyd? How do you, how do you kind of shut that down and, and make him hesitate? Because... Once that kid gets in the zone with it, I mean, he throws not just one. He'll, like, triple it all in one load. How? All you have to do with, with Floyd is don't let him set it up. Don't let him set up. You have to make him think. You have to make him think. You have to make him – I mean, you have to be on your feet. You have to be on your toes. You got to pretend you're going in so he can shoot it. But don't go in. I mean, you have to make the little things once in a while, you know, uh, so he can shoot it and, 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 and don't catch you. If, if you just walk straight in – Flat put it, he's gonna catch you. Boom, right there. I mean, you're gonna have to be on your toes. You're gonna have to, I mean, make the little moves forward and step in, and step out. You know, step and get your angles. I mean, you know, you have to do a lot. Of, uh, you have to do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, coordination on your feet, moving in different angles. Well, there you go, man. Uh, three hours of boxing talk here on Leaving the Ring with my with your host. <laughs> Toya, and our producer behind the switchboard, Mr. David Chen. Be sure to tune in every Thursday night. If you missed the roundtable to the Floyd Mayweather and Miguel Cotto, you can uh, catch it on our website at livingringradio.com, or you can just download it on iTunes. Be sure to pick up your Undisputed Fight magazine. You know, uh, we put a lot of content in there, a lot of hard work behind everything that we do. And a real quick announcement. We got a new show that we're developing. It's called The Boxing Fix. It's going to be concentrating on mostly on the undercards of, like, the Friday night fights. It's for the boxing addicts that need their boxing fix before the main event. So that will be out on May 13th. Be sure to tune in. It should be a real fun show. I'm excited about it. And uh, make sure you tune in every Thursday night for Leaving the Ring and Monday for Noche de Boxeo.